there. Thanks for listening and welcome to the Marketing Matchmaker Podcast. If you're looking to grow your business, increase your revenue and scale your impact, all while staying true to who you are and the people you serve, this is the show for you. I'm Jennifer Tamborski, digital marketing strategist, fractional CMO, and founder of Virtual Marketing Experts. My team and I work with six and seven figure coaches, consultants, and online entrepreneurs who are tired of playing the guru game of one size fits all marketing. They're ready to create a business and marketing strategy that actually builds relationships with their ideal clients, creates massive shifts in their business and rapidly increases their revenue. As your marketing matchmaker, I'm going to help you find the perfect marketing match for you. This show will teach you how to reach your ideal client, connect with your audience, build that perfect relationship, and generate more revenue. All through a process I like to call dating your ideal client. Now let's go have some fun. Hey there, welcome back to Marketing Matchmaker. You know, my kids just finished school. This last week was their last week of school. And so now they are off for the summer, which always makes me want to automate more of my business so that I can spend more time with them. I think that's one of the great things about having our own business is that we get to set our own schedules and step back um, during those times that we want to step back and push forward when we want to. And I often think that um, when people look at that, when, they, when they're when they looking at, okay, I don't really want to take on clients in this time frame, they tend to back off their marketing in those periods when it's just the opposite. We should really be marketing more during the summer so that we have an audience to open the doors to when we're ready for really launching a new program or a new course or whatever that thing might be in the fall. So I think, you know, now is the time that if you have ever thought about creating a new funnel or starting to create, grow your email list, or if you really want to launch a course in the fall, or you really want to open up doors to a new group coaching program or mastermind program, or even just have a base of new clients to start working with in the fall, now's the time to really hone in on and ramp up your marketing. And it doesn't have to take all summer for you to get started on it, right? Like you could really build out your funnel pretty quickly and then let it run without you being involved. I mean, that's the best thing about a funnel to begin with. So today's episode, I really wanted to focus on what three funnels are working right now. There, I mean, there are hundreds of types of funnels, but I have noticed in my business and my client's business and really the industry in general that there are three things that are working really well right now when it comes to a funnel and really paid traffic, what's working in paid traffic land when it comes to marketing your business and your funnels. So the top funnel, actually these are in no particular order. These are going to be what is best for you and your business. Because here's the truth, I can tell you, use XYZ, and it may not work for you because your audience may not actually connect with it. So one of these may be better for you than others, and you get to decide which one is going to work for you. So we'll start with the tried and true, the webinar funnel or masterclass, or uh, video sales letter, or what else do they call it? Um, training, short training, whatever you wanna call it, it's all the same thing. It is basically taking your clients through some sort of training, giving them the problems that they're having and a solution to those problems, and in that process, teaching them something. That I think is what people have, they got away from for a very long time and they're now back to learning or remembering that it is super important 
to teach something in your webinar. It is not just a sales fest, right? The whole point of this particular funnel is to give value to your audience so that they know you're the expert and know that you can help them solve whatever their problem is. One of the things that with this type of funnel that I know is working really now is a shorter version. Reality is, is you want to keep it to 45 minutes or less, depending on what you're doing. The longer you have it, the more opportunity it gives someone to hop off. So spending five, 10 minutes, really five minutes introducing yourself and then jumping into the meat of the training and then spending 10, 15 minutes at the end providing them with your solution, whatever that might be. And quite honestly, if you're not opening the doors to something, a, a webinar funnel may not be something that you want to do right now. That may be a later thing. Um, and it might be something that you give to your warm audience instead of maybe cold traffic on social media or in your pay traffics. The second type of funnel I wanted to cover today was the quiz funnel. Quizzes are amazing. Everybody loves to take a quiz. I mean, let's be honest, how many Disney, Disney princess quizzes have you taken? And I know that I have had clients have amazing results when it comes to quizzes. If you are running cold traffic to a quiz and can provide them with an answer to that burning question that they have, and then provide them with continual nurturing, you're able to really warm them up to who you are, what you do, and who you serve so that in the fall, let's say you're running it for the summer, in the fall, you can open the doors and say, hey, I'm ready to serve you and you will have a greater chance to really get those clients to convert. Cold traffic doesn't always convert. It is best to warm them up. I was actually having a conversation with a client this morning and we were talking about the fact, because we're getting ready to launch her quiz. We were talking about the fact that this strategy is really a three, six, 12 month process, right? We're not expecting people to go from quiz to purchase without any nurturing or follow up in between. This is something that brings in that cold audience at a very low price point and warms them up through the process. It is incredibly effective. In fact, I've had clients bringing in uh, leads at like $1 and less when it comes to that lead, which allows you to use your paid traffic costs or spend in a more effective way. You can you, you can bring in a whole lot more people, which gives you the opportunity to connect with more people and obviously increase your sales at the end. The last lead magnet that I wanted to touch base with today is a download. These are also great ways to again, bring in cold traffic. Now, Again, just like with the quiz, your download is not most likely going to immediately turn into a sale. It's possible, but the likelihood of it isn't incredibly high. And you can also give some kind of download, something that they found really valuable, something that's going to shift or that they think they want, even if it's not something that necessarily that is going to make massive changes in their life, it's going to give them the information that they're looking for. So things like in the digital marketing world, I see a lot of swipe my email sequences or swipe my um, graphics or, uh, those, or ads, a lot of ad copy, swipe my ad copy. Those kind of swipe files people love. Um, in the, in other industries, I see things like, you know, a download for a spreadsheet of some kind where you can track something or gives them the five pieces of SEO that they must know. I circle around to a lot of marketing terminology, 
But the reality is, is giving them an opportunity to really um, learn something from you in a quick bite will help you to, again, get them on your email list and nurture them through a process so that you're when you're ready to open the doors to whatever it is you want to sell, that's what you're going to do. The whole idea behind a funnel is to grow your email list. And reality is, my friends, your email lists have become more critical now than they ever have before. Um, in paid traffic and in digital marketing, costs are going up. They are. They're still less expensive than, say, running an ad on TV ever was. And yet, they're more expensive than they were six months or a year ago, which means that your investment and your dollars need to be very strategically aligned. And the more you can get people onto your email list, the more you're able to warm them up. Cold audiences are not converting to sales anymore for high ticket offers, right? You really need and want to nurture that client along. So if you have a high ticket offer that you are really wanting to sell, maybe it's three, five, 10, 20, $100,000, you get to understand that it takes time for someone to be willing to invest that in you and you really want to give them a reason to do that. But in order to do that, you get you need to get them on your email list so they really learn who you are and can connect with you. These are ways that can help you to really grow and scale your business. A warm audience is much more likely to convert than a cold audience. So if you started, let's say today, and created a funnel, and ran it through June and July and maybe August, you could actually build hundreds of people on your email list and be warming them up so that in September, when you turned around and are ready to open the doors to your program, you can nurture, you've nurtured that list and you can legitimately offer to them and you will have a much higher opportunity and average rate of return on that than you will if you're trying to sell your program to a cold audience using pretty much any method. Now, one thing I will say, a couple of years ago, micro offers were a huge thing. Um, I think right before COVID hit, they, they were a huge opportunity for people to, they were making lots of money. Now, here's the thing. It's not that micro offers stopped working. So if you have a $47 training or whatever that thing is, it's that you are needing to invest a lot more in that in order to get that person on your list. So you get to make a choice of which one is a better option for your audience. Is it to get somebody to buy something from you, whether that's a $47 offer or a $7 offer or whatever that thing is? Is it better to have them buy from you because we know once they've bought, they're more likely to buy? Or is it better to bring them in free based on whatever it is that you're offering them and move them through a nurture sequence? Both sides need their nurture sequence. Let's be clear about that. You get to really determine that based on your audience, on who it is you're targeting. And sometimes it helps to talk that out with somebody who's in the industry, whether that's your coach or whether it's a digital marketer or whether that's a mastermind group. I offer you the idea of really brainstorming it with someone to determine what is a better fit for you and your audience and how can you implement this strategy in a way that's going to make you successful in the long run. Remember, marketing is a long-term game, meaning that your marketing is not going to work tomorrow. I actually had a, a Discover Call sign up the other day that on her form, she said, "I." the question is, what do you need right now from digital marketing? And she said, I need immediate results. Well, 
here's the thing. If you haven't marketed your business before, expecting immediate results is not going to happen. You can definitely get leads quickly depending on what you have set up already. But if you don't have that base, that consistency that we've talked about over and over again of being in front of your audience, getting people to get on the phone with you and you selling them your product, service, or solution may not happen immediately. So it is best to really look at your future. What do you want to happen in your future? And set your marketing up to hit that goal, right? If you want to open your course in September, backtrack so that you know what you need to do, how many people you need to get on your list, how many people you need to have on a webinar, how many people you need in the quiz funnel in order to get them through the process so that you're able to open the doors and really have successful launches, whether those are evergreen launches or live launches or just opening your door to your group coaching program or even just bringing in new clients for the fall. Make sure that you have these pieces in place in order to get to the point where you can make money and create revenue. Because that's our goal, right? We all wanna grow our business, increase our revenue, and scale our impact. And I will tell you right now, my friends, that funnels and paid traffic will definitely help you do that if you implement it in a way that's going to work for you, your business, and your audience. Thank you for listening to the Marketing Matchmaker Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, I would love to hear your feedback. Please head over to Apple iTunes and leave a review so we can hear from you. And if you are a coach, consultant, or online course creator who are looking to grow your business, increase your income, and scale your impact, connect with me at yourmarketingmatchmaker.com. I look forward to hearing from you.